Welcome to the NWSL on Lifetime Ford Halftime Show. Ford, go further. Halftime here at Toyota Park in the home team. Chicago Red Stars up 1-0 over the Portland Thorns. And we've talked about it throughout this broadcast early on that Chicago's going to undergo a trade here. Three players will be leaving, a three-team deal. But no doubt the story of this offseason, the NWSL, was a trade that brought Sam Kerr here to Chicago. She's the reigning player of the year in this league. She's the leading goal scorer in the history of this league. But she's only now just 24 years old. And talking to her earlier in the year when we were talking about this trade, what excited her most was coming to a team where she was going to have players look up to and also coaches. And Rory Dames got to challenge her day in and day out because she wore the captain's arm band last year in, in Jersey at just 23 and then have great players to look up to like Julie Ertz, Alyssa Nair and others, those two in particular that have done it for club and country at the highest level. It's no surprise this young player feels that she has strides to make because she started her athletic career with the ball in her hands, not her feet. Sport in my family is pretty big. My dad played professional AFL Aussie Rules. My brother ended up playing Aussie Rules too and I wanted to be just like my, my big brother and my dad and my mum always said we have four kids and she knew which two would be the sporty two, me and my brother. She said once you know we could pick up a ball you could just tell that our hand-eye coordination and our skill was different to other kids. I played with the boys till I was 12 and it's a pretty contact sport so came home one day with a bit of a, a black eye and a blood lip and it was no harm to me, it was just part of the game and my dad got a little bit protective and said it's time, she's out of there and they couldn't sit on the sideline anymore and watch me get roughed up. That decision devastated Kerr, but she took all the tools she learned from the AFL and transformed herself into a player the game of world football has rarely seen. Sam Kerr is that girl that you never know exactly what she's going to do on the field. She's so unpredictable. She's strong. I mean, she can push you off the ball and she's quick and agile. You have some players that kind of specialize in back to goal. You have some players that specialize in getting in behind. She's one of those few forwards that can do all these different things and so it makes it very hard to defend. Sometimes you get a more one-dimensional player and you can kind of negate the strongest part of their game whether they're you know a very um, cerebral player or tactical or technical or very athletic whereas when you have someone like Sam who possesses everything if you shut down one thing she's just gonna beat you at another. To others Sam Kerr may seem to be the most complete player in the world. To Kerr she's not even close. People might think it's crazy, but I still don't think my finishing is up to par. You know, I scored 17 goals last year, but I had way more shots than that. I always seem to finish those goals that no one thinks I can finish and miss the ones that are the easy ones. But I feel like the simple things is where I need to perfect my game. I've got so much more to accomplish in, in football. I still haven't accomplished half of, not even a quarter, I haven't even touched the surface. And I've won the MVP of the NWSL. I still haven't won this thing, but you know, I'd give in all my personal awards for some championships. It's very rare that someone has an MVP season or, you know, wins player of the year when their team's bottom of the ladder. Very rare. So I, I want to win, want to win championships, I want to win World Cups, I want to win Olympics. From then, if, you know, I never win a personal award again, I'll be happy if I win one of those. And her name, her name is known around the world. This is the Men's World Cup. Australia played this morning against France. People representing her jersey, and she will be playing in France next year as the Matildas have already qualified for the Women's World Cup in 2019. When we come back on the NWSL on ESPN, presented by Lifetime, Jen and Kate break down the first half. You're watching the Ford Halftime Show. Ford, go further. Look, here's the thing about Diet Coke. It's delicious. It makes me feel good. Life is short. If you want to live in a yurt, yurt it up. If you want to run a marathon, I mean, that sounds super hard, but okay. I mean, just do you, whatever that is. And if you're in the mood for a Diet Coke, have a Diet Coke. Diet Coke, because I can. A dazzling place I never knew. A new, fantastic point of view. No one to tell us no, or where to go, or say we're only dreaming. Let me share this whole new world with you. Yeah. 
It's right in front of you. Bleu de Chanel, le parfum. Welcome back to the NWSL on ESPN, presented by Lifetime. This is the Ford Halftime Show. Four to go further, one nothing. our score at the half. But check out the scoreboard. The North Carolina Courage, unbeaten, no longer Brittany Ratcliffe for Utah. The game winner in stoppage time to end that 12-match unbeaten streak for the Courage. So that's some big news around the league. Jen Hildreth, Kate Markgraf, and we've got one goal so far in this matchup between two teams real tight on the table. And of course, it was who you would expect it to be. Sam Kerr leading the charge, which gave Chicago the Red Stars a 1-0 lead from her efforts. But this was a game with lots of turnovers in the middle of the park and it was Nagasato trying to find Kerr or vice versa all 45 minutes to go. Here we see Sinclair trying to make an impact on the game. This shows a little bit of physicality and a little bit of Moss trying to do something. Hubley does a great job standing her up, but here's the difference. Watch Kerr start on the inside, the top of your screen, spins out, gets Hubley to tuck in, which allows the through ball into her, and Hubley leaves her feet. No chance to get to the ball, doesn't realize how fast Kerr is, and that draws the penalty. And then she looks to the other person, Nagasato, who's been so incredible all game long, gets stopped in the first one. Not a well-taken penalty, but Klingenberg leaves her spot early, but Nagasato able to put it away. Yuki Nagasato with the only goal so far when the NWSL and ESPN presented by Lifetime returns. We'll have the start of the second half. This has been the Ford Halftime Show. Ford, go further. I wanted to give a shout out to my dad. Happy Father's Day. Love you and thanks for all the support. Happy Father's Day, Dad. I love you. Thanks for all you do. Hi, Dad. Happy Father's Day. Love you so much. Happy Father's Day to all the incredible dads out there and a special Happy Father's Day to my father, who I love very much. Happy Father's Day to my father, Robert, and my grandpa, Chuck. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye. I love you. Happy Father's Day weekend to all the dads out there. Maybe some taking in a soccer match with their daughters. <laughs> Providing a nap, a shoulder to lean on when needed. It looks cozy. Looks hot, yeah, get a that's little, for sure. Take a little snooze, but not during a soccer game. <laughs> this one's too good. one nothing. our score. Chicago Red Stars leading the Portland Thorns, a team they have not beaten, by the way, since 2013, the first year of the league. Yuki Nagasato, the goal scorer, Sam Kerr, earning the penalty kick attempt that eventually led to the rebound and the goal by Nagasato. Picking up where she left off. Didn't worry about that international break one bit. She was NWSL Player of the Week prior to the break. Tacked on another goal to her Red Stars career. Carpenter giving chase to this ball as Celissa Nair will just clear it out of bounds. That ball just out of the reach of Kerr, who was going to give everything she had to try to intercept it. Here's Carpenter. Gilliland does have a little bit of that crazy color sunscreen on her cheeks now that I look at it. And let's go down to Dallin Cuff, see what he found out at halftime. Thanks, Jen. Talk to both coaches. Let's we'll start with Portland trying to get back into this game on the road. Mark Parsons said, first and foremost, got to cut out the unforced errors. Made too many mistakes at the back, allowing them to move and create chances. Also, in terms of their offense, want to be patient. Swing it in the back. They're sitting a little further back. Swing it from side to side. Open up some of the gaps and exploit the gaps. And defensively, he thought they'd been good on the Chicago side of things. Rory Dames thought they should have capitalized on some of their chances in transition. They had three or four. They didn't take them. He wants to see them convert if they can. And also, Lindsey Horan, they got to know where she is. You just saw her just get fouled there. He says everything good that is going, that is happening for them is going through Lindsey. That was evident in the first half. They have to know where she is and communicate throughout every possession. One substitution for Portland to start the second half. I believe I mistakenly called Tyler Lucy 
Ellie Carpenter in that first play, but Lucy is into the match for the Thorns and for Hubley. Dangerous ball falls down and into the corner! Lindsay Horan has evened it up just a couple minutes into the second half. I think Dallin led us perfectly into that goal, talking about Lindsay Horan and the impact she has off set pieces in the man marking of Chicago. You watch Kerr trying to come back with her. Kerr and Horan both go up for it. You can see Gillian try to come in and help, but Andresina dumps it in that space that's no man's land for a goalkeeper. There's no way Nair is going to come out for that. You can see both of them go up a challenge. The ball happens to fall closer to Horan, and she's able to get something on it. What I love about Horan and those half chances that she's able to find is she just keeps it on frame. She doesn't roof it. We've seen her take a half ball. We've seen her take a ball out of the air. She's incredible with her timing, but more importantly, knowing the amount of pace she needs to put on the ball. And she's always able to put that spin on it to keep it low. So good in the air. Leads this league in aerial duels one and duels one overall. And that was her fifth goal of the season. What a duo. She and Christine Sinclair have been this season. Sinclair leading the league with six goals on the season. Haran now with five. That ties her for second, along with Sam Kerr and Megan Rapino. Portland trying to look for a bit more, but not happening that time. Rory Dames talked to us this week about Portland having his team's number, and you can see it there in the series record. It's been 12 straight unbeaten for the Thorns against the Red Stars. That includes a 3-2 win earlier this season. Where Lindsay Horan scored, and where she got to a ball off a set piece. Turnover. Kerr is offside. Kerr usually gets this right, but in this time she leaves a little bit early. But Vasconcelos takes a little bit too long to get it to her. She's already there. She's already reading the seam. But Vasconcelos touch before she passed that ball was too far away from her body to hit that quick release. Now this is Vasconcelos' ninth appearance of the season, but remember there's no Sofia Huerta as Portland again forcing the issue on the other end. That's Mallory Weber. And Portland's going to have its first corner kick of the match. Point making, though, Vasconcelos maybe not as attuned to Sam Kerr's movements and time and just hasn't had as much time to play with her so far as someone like a Huerta would have. Set pieces were a huge concern for Rory Dames coming into this match. That ball is going to bounce over everybody's head. Mengus. And on this near side as Haran takes it over. It looks like with Tyler Lucy's insertion, Kate, it's been Ellie Carpenter to drop back into that right back position. Klingenberg at left back as she was to start the match. Public coming off. She had been the starting right back. And Lucy in an attacking role. We've seen her busy early in the second half. Gilliland and Nagasato. Now the ball toward Kerr, who heads it on the goal, but it is saved. Nagasato has her head up the entire time looking for Kerr. But wasn't able to get enough power in a redirection to trouble Ekstrom. 
No trouble for Nair on the other end. Off that ball from Cerner Gorcevic. Kerr off to the races again. Flag is down. Kerr takes the shot. You just sense how hungry she is. Five goals in her last five matches. Kerr is such an aggressive runner on that restraining line. She is on side on this one, able to see Reynolds, who is keeping her on the deeper of the two defenders. We get to see her look over her shoulder to see where Menges is, but the half bounce got to her. She wasn't able to time it correctly, lunged a little bit, got underneath the ball. But that was all set up. She was quiet, she was quiet while slowly drifting laterally, waiting for Julie Ertz to pick her head up, and then she took off. Nagasato just had that ball stripped by Mengus. Weber hoping to link up with Sinclair. Cola Prico tripped. Remember, Lindsay Horan is on four yellows, and that will be her fifth. That means she will miss the next match for yellow card accumulation. Is it dirty? No. Is it poorly timed? She's not able to get the ball, but she still leaves her feet because she leaves it late. That's the reason why she has so many fouls. It's not that she's purposely trying to hurt people. She just doesn't time it 100% correctly. I don't think that's red because of the angle of the approach from which she left her feet. Has she gone with both feet? Absolutely, but she bends that underfoot enough where it's not part of the foul. Reckless for sure, I think, as the card would warrant. Mots smothered. Lucy looking for it at the front of that Portland attack. She's provided a spark in this second half for the Thorns. Could not get the cross through Julie Ertz, though. Lucy's energy and pace have revitalized this offense because she's stretching the Red Stars back line further and further back, putting them under pressure, not allowing them to build up any sort of play and keeping them pinned in their own half. A raw fight and desire is how Mark Parsons described her last season. Here's that long throw from Carpenter. Headed down, Sinclair gets to it. Saved by Nair. Busy night in the NWSL, and what a result for the Utah Royals. FC taking down the North Carolina Courage for the first time this season. The Courage winding up on the wrong end of a result. A stoppage time game winner by Brittany Ratcliffe in that one. Washington and Seattle also final 0-0. The score in that one, the rain coming into the night in second place on the table. Orlando and Sky Blue FC still locked up at two goals apiece. All of those matches you can find on the Go90 app and Go90.com. Also check out NWSLsoccer.com for information. Uh, Ertz, not too happy with Sorna Gorchevich there. back on it. This will sneak through. I think all of our eyes opened up a bit wider here in that North Carolina result. Not that you would not think Utah capable. I mean, they drew. We saw that match on our game of the week earlier this season in their first meeting, but no one had been able to figure it out. And not only did they lose, but that they didn't score. Well, Utah's getting it stronger and stronger. A player, a team that's built from half of Kansas City, a team that folded, and then now some new players added in. So that team needs some time before they're going to build that chemistry. 
But what's interesting about North Carolina, part of the reason why they've been so successful is they really haven't been hit by the injury bug like so many other teams. These two in particular, but almost all the teams have been hit by some major injuries to some of their key players. And you don't get that sense that has happened at all in North Carolina. Well, Abby Dahlkemper was banged up in the U.S. matches. But I think Williams. Abby Ursig stepped up and is probably playing better, if not the best out of all the center backs right now. Seems whoever's been on the field for North Carolina, they found a way. <laughs> Plug and play. Credit to Paul Riley for that. And, and you know, it's funny you mentioned Utah coming together. Remember, they're one of the three teams involved in this trade that is pending. So they could be getting some more help as well. Second corner of the match for the Thorns. Reynolds back in the fray. Haran got her head to it. What makes her so good in the air? I mean, I know that she is a, a taller player, but it, it's more than just that. She's only 5'9". She's an imposing force, but she just times it so well. So even if you're on the inside and have a better angle to the ball than she does, she jumps earlier. And just jumping that little bit early, even if you're small, smaller or shorter than the other person, you'll get that advantage, because then if they go up and hit you with the elbow, they're going to get the foul. So she also reads the defenders and when they're going to jump as well. Here's Sonar Gocevic. Ertz back in that center back position for the Red Stars tonight. Nagasato, the big switch. These two teams tied in the standings, 15 points apiece coming into this one. Trying to stay in the top four. Those four teams make it to the postseason in the National Women's Soccer League. Thorns the defending NWSL champs. Substitutions coming. You said Andresinha, maybe not her most influential match as she goes off to make way for Celeste Bure. Hasn't quite found her footing in there. She's one of those players that reads the game really well, but she's not going to be your six like uh, Amandine Henry Henri that used to sit back there and clean up, which Freed, Haran, and Sinclair do whatever they wanted to do. So I think she's still trying to figure out how she fits in this game plan. Bure, a player, started the first six matches of this season for Portland. This is her ninth appearance. Gilliland. All out Ertz to punch it up, but nobody home. Scoring update for you from Orlando. The Pride taking the lead 3-2. Rachel Hill putting it in the back of the net. Alex Morgan being credited with the assist. Get a chance to see the Orlando Pride in our game of the week next week. They'll hit the road as we will as well. See the Washington Spirit, Rose Lavelle is another yellow card is handed out here. That match next week beginning at 7 p.m. Eastern, We're back in prime time on ESPN News. Nikki Stanton getting booked. Haran already in the books and will miss the next match as that was her fifth yellow card of the season. These are the two most physical teams in the league, by the way, in terms of fouls conceded coming into this match. Will a set piece wind up being the difference? Klingenberg right up the middle, but too close to Alyssa Nair. That's just excellent range from Nair coming so far off her line on that near post. That was a driven ball, so that was an early decision for she made the correct one. 
This has been a much more lively Portland team here in this second half, don't you think, Kate? I mean, they got the goal, obviously, which helps. But even before that, they seem to be coming out in the better form. I think it's all about inserting Lucy up top. She had that bit of spark, that bit of defensive pressure higher up the field that allowed everyone else to join them. And now, when Chicago is winning the ball, they're so far away from Nagasato and Sam Kerr, that ball has to be a 60-yard ball in order to beat it and really direct. And a little bit more difficult to make something out of. Here's Nagasato, Colaprico finds Kerr. She'll send it out to Gilliland. Gilliland back across. Nagasato up and down, Vasconcelos. And an easy clearance, but not the best of those. Kabure, who just came into the match for Portland. Mots now puts it right on goal, just a bit over, in fact. But it had to be tapped over by Eckerstrom. Chicago with a nice bit of possession in the last couple minutes, and you can see Eckstrom reading it all the way, able to do just enough to get it over, away from danger. But a nice little spell of offense from the Red Stars, who've been mostly on the back foot in the second half. Mott's had two goals in the first meeting against Portland this season. Here's the corner from Colaprico. I mean, there are some absolute beasts in the air, and I mean that in the most flattering way in this match. Just players who are so tough and good in the air, and the crowd, you might hear them. The reason would be the young lady standing there on the sideline getting ready to make her season debut for the Chicago Red Stars. U.S. national team defender Casey Short on the field for the first time in 2018. And the Chicago Red Star fan base takes a big sigh of relief that one of the best 1v1 defenders in the league is getting some valuable minutes in this important game. You think what a difference short Vanessa DiBernardo they may be able to make as they get back to full fitness to really key pieces for this team. They're going to have an extremely strong spine. Morgan Bryan joins DiBernardo. The question is, what's going to happen with the wings? And can they create? A lot of contact, Kate, but the assistant referee was right there. Didn't do anything with the flag. Rory not happy about it. This ball for Kerr, down to Mots! That goes all the way back to Vasconcelos, playing the nice, simple ball. Able to find Nagasato all the way over, over Sam Kerr. Mots just doing something, I think a bit surprised that it came to her, you get to see Kerr's reaction. But it's interesting now that Portland is starting to give up possession in that midfield as soon as Andresinha left the game. Bouye comes in and not able to make that impact. And even though Andresinha didn't, I actually didn't think contribute that much, maybe there's a gap and a hole in the seam that Chicago has adapted to and is now exploiting. Sam Kerr, you just saw with her hands over her face, the all-time leading scorer in this league. She's been held at bay so far, but boy, has she gotten close as the Chicago Red Stars hosting the defending NWSL champion Portland Thorns on the NWSL on ESPN, presented by Lifetime, our game of the week. So glad to have you here with us. Jen Hildreth, Kate Markgraf, Dallin Cuff, and it's Ellie Carpenter, one of the Aussies on Aussie night, but for the opposing team, getting up for Portland. Sent across. It'll be Portland Thorns throw. And Carpenter 
the youngest player in the National Women's Soccer League, just 18 years old, will come to take it. Casey Short just checked in a few moments ago. That's a bad foul to give up. Lucy does a good job going down hard to make it look a little bit more than I thought it was. It's a half challenging ball and just a little extra bit of shove. And this is an extremely dangerous area. Well, what do you look for from Klingenberg here? Dump it in between the 12 and the six low enough where Nair cannot come out. If it's high, it's enough time for her to react to it. And read the trajectory of the ball. And just looking to dump it in between that near post and the center. Got Haran, you've got Sinclair. And Klingenberg on the ball with the service. Punched by Nair. The second ball, though, won by the Thorns. Still attacking is Haran. And Nair, sky and eye to steal it away. Those two teammates wearing the red, white, and blue earlier this week. USA's two wins against China during the FIFA international break. Nagasato has some green grass out in front of her. Kerr in the corner. Too far out of the reach of Mott's punch, though, by Eckerstrom. Not very well. Is short. Gets to the ball. Keeps it in. Mott's not much of a look before sending the ball with her left foot. It's a bit haphazard at the moment by the Red Stars, though they've managed until that ball to keep the possession. We have a final score from Orlando. The pride, that late goal from Rachel Hill, the game winner as Sky Blue FC put up a valiant fight, had that one tied two to two, but could not get their first win of the season. So the Orlando pride pick up the three points. Orlando and Seattle both with 19 points now. That puts them in second place on the table behind North Carolina. The Courage losing their first match of the season tonight. one nothing to Utah Royals FC. I think you guys were asked in the pregame show if North Carolina could go undefeated. Well, we won't ask that question again. Weber. Getting into the area, looking for Lucy, then Haran. Now it's Serta Gorchevich. Nagasato, quick to the ball. Carpenter dropped back to defense in this second half with the insertion of Lucy. That's going to be a foul against Portland. Lucy came in hard on that one. And they need some more attention. Ertz down on the ground for Chicago, a player who's just starting to get back healthy. Just starting to get back healthy, asked to play center back. And you get to see it's not so much the first challenge in the air, it's more the two bodies getting tangled up. You know, Zach Ertz, Julie's husband, certainly concerned for what he sees on the field. Lucy did receive a yellow for that challenge on Ertz. It's the player who missed six of the first seven matches this season, trying to get healthy, just got back in with the U.S. national team for the first time since March. And oh my, if you consider Sam Johnson, who typically has been at center back for this Chicago team, one of those players in the pending trade. Now you've got Ertz.
potentially hurt. So you're watching your left ankle there, and it's Lucy's back leg that comes and hits it when it's already planted, which causes it to bend at an, a weird angle. So it's that lower leg that you see there. Both the players going for it. Lucy getting booked because she didn't have a chance to win it, but still went with full power, trying to impede the play a little bit. Well, this certainly changes the tenor of this match as everyone looking on in concern for Ertz. Crowd applauding as she is back to her feet, but how steady she is is yet to be seen. Julia was right there cheering her husband along as his team won the Super Bowl, but now much more somber look on everyone's face as they wonder about the fate of this U.S. national team player and the 2017 U.S. Soccer Female Player of the Year. Wiping away tears or sweat, either way. Trying to bite her lip and continue on here is Ertz, as Lucy was booked, our third booking of the evening. Mentioned these are the two most physical teams in terms of fouls conceded in the NWSL this season. Now we're being told, or maybe something else, watch a handball before that play. Oh, right here when the ball is going to mm. Bouillet. She does put her hand up, but the referee from the angle either doesn't see it or does not think <laughs> it's curse worthy to be called, but curse on it. <laughs> curse angry, and I love that intensity and spiciness of her. And that's part of the X factor when coaches talk about her, how incredible her intensity is that she brings everyone along with her. Yeah, Rory was giving every official he get it within earshot, an ear full, because he said, <laughs> if you just call that handball, none of this happens. And of course, as, as bad as it looked at first, Julie thankfully is back up. He was furious and letting him know, if you just make the right call, none of this has to happen. Well, as you said, Dallin, thankfully, it is great to see Erds back on her feet. And now both teams will try to regroup a bit. 75th minute, all tied up, one apiece. Chicago struck first, but Portland came out firing in this second half. They've been the stronger team for the majority of the second half, although Chicago has had some moments. Here's Horan, goal scorer for the Thorns. Scored her fifth of the season to even things up. It's in the 48th minute. Klingenberg got herself free, but not too much dangerous on that ball. Big result of the night, Utah Royals FC. Fourth minute of stoppage time, Matheson with the free kick. Brittany Ratcliffe, look at her just staying with it here. But putting it home. Look how fast she goes to ground, but she gets up. I mean, that is the quickest I've ever seen anyone get up off the ground, but more importantly, able to get that much power on the shot and keep it low as her body's traveling up. First loss of the season for the first place, Courage, and here comes Kerr. Kerr with the layoff, wants it back. Vasconcelos, Nagasato, the header is wide! So quick on the counter, right down the spine. A little bit of tiki tacky passes back and forth, drawing the defense in, and that buys enough time for Nagasato to get in a good position. Just a glancing header, not able to get her body fully behind it. You see the frustration. Big substitution coming for Portland. We talked about. Casey Short making her debut for Chicago. How about Haley Rasso? Another Aussie on the field on Aussie night. She makes her first appearance of the season for Portland and Kate, she can be a difference maker in their attack. Absolutely, and I like how she is very disciplined in keeping her width. It forces that left outside back to stay with her and stretches the back lines horizontally, creating more seams for any of the front runners to run into. 
Jen, as you mentioned, it is Aussie night. Of course, the Australian men's national team played this morning, losing to France 2-1. Their kickoff was 5 a.m. local time here. I asked Haley yesterday, are you going to wake up and watch that? She said, it hurts so much that I can't. I'm trying to make my debut, first time back from injury. I want to see it, but I can't watch it live. Hope to watch the replay later in the day. Oh, good on you, Haley Rasso. Some discipline right there. And we noticed in training yesterday, she just adds a different element in terms of the ball she sends. And you mentioned the great whip that she's able to keep. She made a difference even in short-sighted training that we saw yesterday. We'll see if she can do it here toward the end of the match. It's her technique on the crosses, right? She's able to get her hips around it, whip it in either far post or drive it in that early seam ball. And has the tactical intelligence to know when to play both by reading where the front runners are in relation to the defender that's trying to mark them. And you've got, you saw that awkward moment there between Julie Ertz and Alyssa Nair. Ertz may not be able to play quite up to her typical speed after that big collision, the hit she took a few moments ago from Lucy. So can Rasso test that? Lucy, too, a lot of speed up top. Here is Rasso. Boy, she gets after it. Haley Rasso hurt her knee in World Cup qualifying for the Matildas. And another big debut for Chicago. Keep them coming, people. Vanessa DiBernardo. Her first appearance of the season as she replaces Vasconcelos. And I don't think I have heard Rory Dames talk about any player's absence more than Di Bernardo's. Yes, he's had U.S. national team players on the bench, but he looks at Di Bernardo as the one that connects it all. But she'll be asked to play in a little bit different position than she's used to, providing a relief on the wing. She's more of a central player, likes to link players, but they need some help on the wings right now. With Huerta not in the lineup, all the players are having to compensate in different ways, and for her, she's getting her on the field regardless of where the space is. They just want to get her minutes. But you're starting to get a glimpse now for both teams as you're seeing these impactful players come onto the field, start to get minutes. What these teams can be as they go forward, and it's going to take time. As you said, some are playing out of position and different pieces, different fitness elements to work into the equation. Sorogorcevic on the far side in some trouble. But it will be a throw for the Thorns. Sorogorcevic, one goal, one assist on the season. Her first in the NWSL. She may not be producing that much, but she occupies defenders where they can't impact the game going forward with her defensive work rate and her positioning. So Mark Parsons always says, well, it's the little things that maybe the stats don't pick up. And seeing her tonight, she is doing such a defensive Watch this out. Hey, work, hey. such defensive work on the ball that's preventing Chicago from getting out on the flanks. Corner kick now for the Thorns. Their third of both the half and the match. Didn't have any corners in the first half. A lot of tall targets in there for the Thorns. Klingenberg looking for Sorna Gorchevich. Bure behind her. The be Bure who gets to it. Bure crashing in to win it for Portland. Will it be enough to create an opportunity? Lucy on the ball. Haran. Back to Klingenberg. You know she wants to set it up. There it is. Not put away. Two Portland Thorns players into the back of the net, but not the ball. Just the speed of play and the ability to change channels. You have two midfielders, Sinclair and Haran, leaving the midfield channel from a deep line position, sprinting in. And look at the defense from Chicago. Where are they? Where is Naughton? Where is Gillian? Why are they not pinching in? Where, are the, where is the chasing recovery runs of Colaprico and Stanton? No one's telling them to not to stay with them. 
And you could see that was a ball that caught Nair a bit unsure. She went, she hesitated, wound Beautiful up having to ball. stay. Beautiful ball. That's one of those holy moly, oh my gosh, defender ball that you never want to see <laughs> when you're playing on that back line. It's so hard because if you get something on it and not your whole body behind it facing the other way, you couldn't nick it in for a deflection. But for me, it's just the sheer lack of commitment to defend the minute it goes wide to whoever you're closest to. A holy moly, oh my gosh ball? <laughs> Is that what you said when you were playing? Maybe. Maybe. Dallin, cough, don't okay. sell me out. <laughs> I'm not. You're, you're very clean in terms of your uh, ability to not curse. It's very impressive. <laughs> well, this Portland team won the NWSL championship a year ago. This year, they will be hosting the final. And you can get tickets to the 2018 NWSL Championship game. They're on sale now. It will be played at Providence Park. Yet to be seen if the Thorns will make it that far. But their stadium, which is always a tremendous atmosphere, will see the match on Saturday, September 22nd, 4.30 Eastern, 1.30 Pacific. That will be broadcast live on Lifetime. Go to NWSLsoccer.com for information. Here comes Carpenter, out to Rasso. The two Aussies. Held up by Casey Short. And now Lindsay Horan limping a little. Horan with her head up, trying to pick out a pass. Got herself. Yeah, a little gingerly recovering from that. Recall she is going to be out next game. So we'll have time to recover. Fifth yellow card of the season handed to her earlier in this match. So we'll have to serve that one game suspension as the Thorns travel to Houston. And now she's sitting down at the middle of the field. Haran, such an important player for this Portland Thorns team that, by the way, has no subs remaining. All three have been used. So either Haran tries to fight this one out or Portland's going to have to go down. She's looking to find Sinclair or Lucy up top. Her foot just gives out on her, but then again, someone's stretching it. Don't quite know what it is. Don't really want to speculate. But she's been so vital to this team. I mean, it's the big things that you see winning those aerial battles, winning most of the duels that she gets into, scoring the goals, five of them on the season, and the one that equalized this match just into the second half. But so much other work that she does as well. She's just on the ball so often, dictating things for Portland. DiBernardo and Kerr! Will that connection pay off? No! Eckerstrom with a big save. And again, a quick transition play that catches Portland out of shape, a little bit too expanded. Nice little give and go between Di Bernardo and Sam Kerr. Sam Kerr forces Eckerstrom to make the save, but Di Bernardo unable to catch up with the play. Everything is going to Sam Kerr as a left side. They're pushing her that way. She earns her team a corner kick. She and Di Bernardo played together in the W League a couple of seasons ago. Right along the goal line is this ball. Eckerstrom a couple times punches it over. The former Penn State keeper. And they're testing Eckerstrom. They're testing whether her decision making in the box has improved there. Not a great punch, but able to recover. Di Bernardo will try it again. A little further away, far post this time. Bounces off a couple of Thorns players. That's going to be another corner for Chicago. Opposite side this time. Sixth corner kick of the match for the Red Stars. Get to see another time. This time a little bit far post. Naughton coming back for it. Hits off. Looks like Weber or Reynolds. Question on whether or not that was a hand, but if it was, it definitely wasn't intentional. Colaprico this time with the service. 
the shot, deflected off Mangus. Into the center, and out. So quite the flurry from Chicago there, but nothing to show for it. And this is the previous one you're watching on this one, whether or not it was a handball. No, it was not from Reynolds. She's able to keep her hand out of it. Portland has yet to give up a goal in the final 15 minutes of a match this season. Chicago very nearly changing that trajectory. And that last sequence with those corner kicks, but still we stay tied, one to one. Nagasato was moving a little gingerly too a few moments ago. Yeah, a little slow to get up after a challenge with Bure. Those two have been physically battling. It is hot. It was high 80s at kickoff here at Toyota Park. Sorna Gorchevich has Sinclair. Bure out to Klingenberg. Lucy got to it first, still battling with Colaprico. Good anticipation. Bure just slipped. That opened the door for Mods. Kerr is onside. She held that line. Sam Kerr needs some help here, or does she? She'll settle for the corner. Oh, goal kick. No, looks like Kerr is not going to be happy with that one. Thought for sure that was going to be going to the corner. Just the differences in attack between the two teams. Look at Sam Kerr, she is all by herself. An excellent ball to Mott. She has to wait for it a little bit. But Mangus does a good job going stride for stride. Hold Sam Kerr up, Sam Kerr picks it. Head up, realizing she's alone by herself. She's gonna have to go for it. Perhaps hit her on the way out. It was a good call by the referee. But when you're playing, you think you're always right. Gotta try to sell it. But the difference is in every single attack with Portland, they have multiple numbers forward, different passing options, which means their offense is a bit more unpredictable. Chicago has gone back to Route 1 soccer that they were known for last year. And it's usually one or two people are the only pe are the only ones providing the attack. Past years, it had been Kristen Press at the head of that attack. This year, it's been Sam Kerr, last year's Golden Boot winner for Sky Blue FC. Lucy trying to make something out of this ball. There, into the net. Hope she didn't catch a piece of the post. She's back on her feet. Here comes Carpenter into the area. Tried to work around Ertz. Ertz calling for Dare to come and get it. Remember, Julie Ertz had a big collision earlier in this half. Nair is doing a fantastic job of keeping this score where it's at. Able to punch it away from pressure. Notice how she didn't punch it in center. She got it wide. Gets stuck in the net. Able to get back up. Carpenter splits two defenders between Ertz and Shorts. And Nair times it perfectly. Right after it leaves Carpenter's foot is when she comes out. So there's no way that she is going to collide with Ka Carpenter and cause, another P and cause a PK. And you know Ertz right there. You remember those moments. Come on, come on. Come get it. <laughs> All the faith in the world that Nair would. And she did. See, Dallin doesn't call you out when you make those comments. <laughs> calls oh, me just out. give him time. He's probably begging for the mic to be opened right now. Too much on that ball for Nagasato. In to stoppage time we go. A stoppage time game winner in the 94th minute for the Utah Royals FC. Earlier tonight to take down the previously unbeaten North Carolina Courage. Well, we have a similar type of finish tonight here at Toyota Park. Here's Haley Rasso in her first appearance of the season. A breakout star for the Storms team last year. Nair, no goalkeeper ever wants to be this busy, especially at the end of a match, but Portland pressing the issue. Klingenberg. So often has gotten that service off. Sinclair got to it. 
near no problemo. Every time Haran plays quickly and gets it wide, there are enough players in advance on the restraining line of Chicago that they're able to whip in a service and either win that first ball or get an opportunity on the reservice with the advanced numbers that they have up there. But it's all because Haran is playing so quickly, Chicago cannot adjust. But then after she plays it, watch her acceleration to then move from the midfield zone to the forward zone, creating even a numbers up advantage as her defender isn't staying with her. Ertz and Rasso entangled. This ends in a draw. The Thorns would drop out of those top four spots in the standings would drop to fifth a point behind the utah royals fc chicago would be in sixth as we are just about at the midway point of the season four teams including chicago have played their 12 matches coming into tonight anyway there's Di bernardo Gilliland's been running this whole match. Why stop now? Kerr. Still working. Nagasato had the goal in the first half for Chicago. Just a little bit off of Nagasato reading those balls on the service. She's always come from a delayed position. But Chicago had to go a little bit more direct today. I think something to do with the trades as well as Sofia Huerta not providing that another quality option out wide and that ability to hold possession changed the way in which Chicago came out. I think they started super high pressure, put Portland on the back foot, but Portland absorbed that in the second half. I think they have the better of the play. 1-1 one, one, our final as this one is not going to produce a winner. Chicago still can't pick up that win against Portland, but I think with all that they have gone through, Kate, as you just mentioned, the three players not able to dress, part of a pending trade, influential players, including Sofia Huerta, Sam Johnson, Taylor Camo, not available. Rosie White gets hurt in warm-ups. Had Matt changed the game plan up a little bit, and they get a point. Absolutely, and for both teams, though, imagine when Heath comes back. Imagine when, for Portland, they've had totally a lot of injuries. Emily Sonnet, both these teams are not at full strength, but they've done a good job staying in the middle of the table. And now let's go down to Dallin Cuff, who's with Sam Kerr. Thanks, Jen. This is Sam coming into this game. A lot of adversity, you guys. People are not here. You have a roster shakeup going on. You've had teams have had injuries over the course of the season. What does it say about this team to come out here and perform and get a result here in a tough game against the defending champs? Yeah, this team's going to be this team no matter what happens. And we've showed that last time playing uh, DC last week. We had national team players out and we fought hard. But yeah, proud of the team, but we're at home, so we want to win. All right, that said, you did not win the game. What, what, need, what needed to be different for you to walk away with three points? What are you not pleased about? Yeah, I thought I could have finished a few. and Disappointing, but a point's better than a loss. Thanks, I appreciate it. No worries. Certainly a disappointed Sam Kerr there, who was very active in the attack for Chicago. Just could not find a way to help her team break through. They did have the first goal of the match, but could not put one away after Portland equalized just a few minutes into the second half. So this one, these two teams tied at the table. That's where they'll stay. One point apiece, 1-1 one, one, our final. We'll be back. was forged by a feeble-fingered peasant woman. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom! As long as hecklers love to heckle, you can count on Geico, save folks money. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Sprint engineers, Sprint offers 50% off a Samsung Galaxy S9 lease. We must tell all humans. You should find Joanne in Marketing ASAP. <laughs> Joanne in Marketing. Switch to Sprint and get 50% off a Samsung Galaxy S9 lease. A 1-1 draw, our final between Chicago and Portland. So we'll catch you up on 
Where this now puts everybody in the standings after a busy night in the NWSL. North Carolina still on top, even though they lost their first match of the season. Orlando moving up as well. They and Seattle both of 19. Utah into the top four. Next Saturday, June 23rd, the NWSL on ESPN presented by Lifetime returns once again in prime time on ESPN News as the Washington Spirit led by Rose Lavelle host U.S. National Team superstar Alex Morgan and the Orlando Pride. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. For Kate Markgraf and Dallin Cuff, I'm Jen Hildreth. You've been watching the NWSL on ESPN presented by Lifetime.